everyone. My name is Sharice LaSalle, and this is my second submission for the Art to Ride Associate Trainer Program. This is my nine-year-old off-track thoroughbred, Charlie, who I adopted in March of 2016. So I've had Charlie for about a year and a half now, and while I started doing the Art to Ride work almost right away, he needed quite a bit of time to recover from the track life. Uh, when I adopted him, he had only been off the track for about four months, and he was in very poor health. Uh, he had rain rot, his hooves were a complete mess, he was underweight and had ulcers, um, he was in a lot of pain, and his coat condition was terrible. He was just a complete <laughs> disaster. Um, and he actually raced as a seven-year-old, uh, so he raced for a very long time, and, um, when I got him, I spent a lot of time just kind of getting him back to good health and doing some basic groundwork, and then I would say he's only been doing real muscle building for the past year or maybe a little bit less than a year just because he was trying to gain weight before that. So there's a couple things you need to know about Charlie. The first is that he is a cribber and that is why he has very un very developed underneck muscles and they're significantly more flabby than they were when I got him but he does still occasionally crib so I don't know if I'll ever be able to completely get rid of those muscles. Um, the second thing you need to know about Charlie is that he struggles with chronic back pain in the loin area, mostly. Um, and I am working with a veterinarian to diagnose the cause of this pain. I have been for a long time. Uh, and I also have been working with a body worker who does the Masterson method massage. And Charlie has been adjusted by an equine chiropractor, but we're still not quite sure why he's always in pain. Um, and some days are better than others. So I really think it's caused by arthritis. He flexed slightly off in his hocks. And I think it's very possible and very likely that he has some arthritis in his hocks that's causing the lower back pain. So the good news is that this work really helps him feel better. It really helps loosen up those muscles. And most of the time after I exercise him, his back feels so much better. So here we're doing some work in hand, and on this particular day, it was quite warm compared to how the weather had been. So Charlie was pretty lazy, but I was focusing on trying to get him very active. Um, I was not focusing on his head and neck so much as I was trying really hard to get him active enough so that the work would actually benefit him. Um, and that is something I think, I think the reason why Charlie struggles so much to be active is because of his pain and possibly arthritis. But I do think we've been making progress, although it's quite gradual. Um, I think he is beginning to take bigger, deeper steps, and I think he is beginning to increase his speed a little bit, um, and we're getting some really nice moments in the work. So, one thing we struggle with in the work in hand, especially, is circles. Charlie didn't really know how to steer when I got him aside from very, <laughs> very basic kind of steering. 
to teach him to step into my outer off that rain. Like right there, you saw he really resisted. I was asking him to turn and he was not really understanding. So he kind of fought me on it. And this has been a real struggle for us. So I don't do a lot of circles because it's difficult for him. Uh, but when I ask him to circle, I try to use the outside rein first and foremost. And then I try to just use the inside rein to kind of uh, remind him where we're going because he gets a little confused and thinks that he's still supposed to go straight. But oftentimes at this point in his training, I have to use quite a bit of inside rein um, as kind of like a leading rein to sort of ask him to come and follow me because he doesn't quite understand. He's getting so much better though. So he does a lot better at the leg yields than a little leg yield. And he was, um, his head popped up which sometimes that happens. Sometimes he's able to keep himself in the stretch throughout the lateral movement, and then other times he kind of seems to struggle with his balance a little bit and lift his head up. So there, he got a little too slow. Um, he was stretching nicely, but his, his back wasn't really doing much. Um, so that's what I'm trying to avoid at this point in his training. I'm trying really hard not to let him get so slow that nothing is really happening. But I think Charlie sort of thinks that's what I want sometimes because I've praised him so much for the stretch that now he thinks as long as he's stretching, that's correct. And I'm trying to teach him now that I do want him to stretch, but first and foremost, I want him to be active. And I want him to respond to my whip aids and my rain aids. That was a nice little bit there. Um, I've also been trying to focus on my rain contact. I think sometimes in the past, I let my reins get a little too loose. Oh, I think we're going to circle again. See there, he really fought me quite a bit. And I had to just try not to fight him, but just like ask him to come with me. Um, and sometimes he fights me more than others, but it's just a miscommunication. He's just not sure what he's supposed to be doing. And... I think because he was a racehorse for so long, the bit pressure causes him a lot of anxiety. So if if it's more slightly more bit pressure than what he's comfortable with, then he starts to panic. Um, he's so much better than he used to be. He used to be really panicky about bit pressure. And I've gotten him to develop a lot of trust in my contact that... I'm not just going to grip on his mouth and just yank on it. And that he can trust that I'm going to be as consistent as I possibly can and as light as I possibly can. Sometimes I have to get a little more firm just to explain to him that he's not doing what I want him to be doing. But then I go back to the light pressure as quickly as possible. So that got a little too slow again. He tends to slow down quite a bit near the camera because he likes uh, my husband who was filming and he is very curious about the camera. So I think he would like very much to go over and visit my husband, but he's not allowed at this time. A lot of times when you notice his head pop up, it's because I asked for uh, an increase in speed from him. Whether I asked with my whip or vocally, his head will often just pop up for a second and then go back down once he's um, 
it's already sped up a little bit. So that's a little better of a pace for him. He still could be going a little faster. His back's not quite lifting up as much as I would like to see. And so I ask for another little mini leg yield. I like to do that a lot in the corners. I like to take advantage of the corners and kind of ask them to step into my outside rain in the corner because it's just a very natural spot for them to do it. So there we did another little leg yield, and I was trying really hard to get him to speed up a little. And that's pretty nice. Um, he struggles sometimes this way when I ask for leg yields, and he sometimes doesn't um, respond to my whip aid when I ask him to step away from it. Um, sometimes he'll just ignore it and continue on straight. So that's something we're still working on. Now he's starting to take bigger strides, getting a little more swing in his step than what he had. That's looking better. Yeah, that's looking quite a bit better. So we're doing a little bit of a leg yield and um, he was able to stay stretched and relaxed through it, which is good. And that's actually looking really nice. So this is his harder way for the leg yields, and so he's actually doing quite good on that one. That was actually really good for him, this direction. I do want to say that I'm very pleased with Charlie's overall development since I got him. I feel like he's in such a better place mentally and physically than he was a year and a half ago. And I don't know if you look back at my first video submission, I think he looks a lot better now than he did. And that was really nice. Some really nice big strides, stepping under his belly and pushing his back up there. And his head's kind of doing that really relaxed bob. really good work for him. I would definitely not say this was our best work. This is um, probably average work for him. I feel like we've had days that he did significantly better than this, but it's a good, it's still a good um, way to show you, you know, where he's at. 
And that was actually a really good light yield for him. So that's why I stopped him. I like to try to find a really, a place where he gives me something really, really good and then stop him at that point. So I'm always looking for that moment where I think, oh, he just gave me something really good. So I have not been riding Charlie very much at all since I adopted him. I didn't ride him, gosh, I don't think I rode him for six months after I got him. I don't remember exactly, but I really didn't ride him for a long time because his health was so poor and then and he had absolutely no top line and then I struggled with saddle fit issues for a long time as well so I finally have a saddle that I think fits him this is a Schleza that I bought on eBay and I shipped it to Karen just recently and she was so kind and adjusted it and um, I think he's so much more comfortable in this saddle. <laughs> so I'm really excited that I can finally start riding him more regularly. He's tricky to fit for a saddle because he has a short back, but he also has very high withers. Um, and he's actually pretty wide, at least I think he is, um, in the shoulders. Our ridden work, like I said, we have not done much, so we're pretty much still in the beginning phases of riding, where we're just working on steering, we're working on getting a nice active walk with a lot of energy. My number one priority in this particular ridden session was just getting him active. I wasn't trying to get the stretch as much as I wanted him to be stepping under and pushing his back up. Because we have to remember that the stretch is a result of the correct work. If they're not using their back muscles, but they're stretching, it's really not beneficial. Charlie has been going through a interesting phase the past few months. He is typically a very mellow guy. About 95% of the time, he's super laid back and calm. But every now and again, something sets him off and he just explodes. And it's very difficult to work with him when he gets like that because he's very distracted and high-headed and um, nervous. So as I was increasing my request for activity from Charlie in the past few months, mostly on the lunge line, he began to explode um, on the lunge line and just get pretty wild. So I quickly learned that Charlie is not one that you can let canter around for a few laps and then he'll settle down. He's not like that. If you let him start running, he will run and run and run and he will just get more and more amped up. So I learned that Although I need to be asking for more activity from Charlie, I do have to be very careful that I don't ask him for too much because if I ask just a hair over what he is comfortable with, he explodes. So I've been experimenting and trying to read him better and learn just how to ask and just how much I can ask for in order to get better quality work from him. But, of course, I don't want him running around hollow, and I don't want him getting anxious and stressed out, because that's very counterproductive. And I think he literally has a switch in his brain where he kind of just switches into the race horde mo racehorse mode. And when that happens, it's not, it's not a good thing.
so for I know some of you other associate trainers um, also struggle with this with horses that are just like you just got have to be so careful not to push them over the edge okay so I did just a very short trot there because I wanted to see if I could wake him up a little bit I felt like he was just too sleepy and I was hoping that it would liven him up which I think it did um, but I had intentionally planned not to trot him at all on this day. Um, he's not he's not really ready for much trotting under saddle. If you watch this work under saddle, he's not using his top line enough to move on to trot. Although I do try it, you know, a little bit here and there. But the purpose of that very short trot was just to try to wake him up. I've been focusing, the few, the few times that I do ride, I've been focusing on my position and it takes quite a bit of mental energy because I haven't been riding regularly. Um, I'm sort of out of practice. So I really have to think about keeping my legs back and keeping my shoulders back and keeping myself relaxed and yet uh, keeping my core toned and... Um, allowing with my arms a little bit when he his head moves and uh, just having a good overall seat and position. It's very difficult for me to concentrate on everything because at this point, since I'm out of practice and he's untrained, there's so much to think about when I'm up there. I'm thinking about a million things and I try really hard to focus on one thing at a time, but there's just, there's a lot. Because <laughs> training a horse that doesn't really know how to be ridden is quite different than training, uh, retraining a horse that already does know how to be ridden. Charlie didn't even know what leg pressure meant, and he still <laughs> doesn't react to it nearly as much as I would like, and we're still working on on that because as a racehorse they never feel leg pressure so when I wrap my legs around his sides and give a squeeze here or there he had no clue what that meant and I have to keep reminding myself he he's still learning this he doesn't always understand why I'm squeezing his side with my leg he responds better to the whip than to my leg because we've done so much work in hand so now I need to help him translate that a, a squeeze of the leg is the same as a tap of the whip. I think I do a better job of keeping a steady contact in the working hand. It's a little bit harder, of course, when you're riding, and I think that's one thing. I noticed I need to work on is uh, trying to keep a steadier rein contact when I'm mounted. There he's starting to pick up the pace a little bit and then he slowed down again. So it's really hard to get him to stay consistently active enough for the work to be beneficial. So that's really our number one goal at this stage in his training. And I think you'll notice that when he does start to push up through his back, like right there, he slows down a little bit, which is natural, but it's also um, important not to let him slow down too much.
Okay, so this is his harder side for the leg yields, but I was asking for a little bit of a leg yield. Um, and he actually responded pretty good there. And ask for another little leg yield. And then he stretches and starts to lift his back. So I notice a pattern. Um, I'm sure you all have noticed this as well, that when you ask for a little bit of lateral work, most of the time, it's followed immediately by the horse stretching and lifting their back. On this particular day, Charlie did not lift his back all that much when I was riding him. I have had other times when I rode him where I feel like he did a better job of um, engaging his core and lifting his back. So that is one thing um, to keep in mind that you know every day is a little different and every day we just have to adapt to whatever the horse is giving us on that particular day and he still could be more active here he's starting to take bigger strides which is great but he's still a little too slow So because we're struggling so much for activity with Charlie, I don't do a lot of circles or a lot of um, small shapes of any kind. I try really hard to keep him on the longer tracks because uh, it's just going to be easier once we get that flowing forward energy. It's going to be easier to get and maintain that kind of activity level if he's not doing these smaller figures. So I keep asking and asking for him to give me more. And there he responded nicely. Even though he's not stretching, he's much, that's a really good pace right there. And now the stretch comes. And now he's actually lifting his back a little. One thing I also think I need to do to improve my riding is to focus on using the inside of my calf. I got into a habit when I was younger of always riding using my heel. I think my riding instructor taught me to do that. Actually, that's looking really good. Oh, you lost it. <laughs> so um, I used to do a lot of jumping and I kind of blame it on that because you know, you squeeze with your heels and you get up into two point and um, so I had a very much a chair seat and I, I, I've i always been in the habit of using my heels where you're actually supposed to use the inside part of your calf muscle to squeeze. But I'm, I also have... Um, not the best anatomy. I kind of toe out. So when I'm riding, I tend to toe out as well. So I have to really focus on trying to keep my toes as much forward as I can. Um, oh, actually, so here <laughs> you might notice I dropped my stirrups because I realized earlier on that my stirrups were a little too short, but I didn't want to get down and adjust them. So I just kept going. But my legs got pretty cramped up, so I dropped my stirrups for a little bit here to just uh, 
relax my heels and legs. So I did notice my stirrups were too short and that kind of put me in a chair seat here. And that's looking better. So he gets these moments that are really nice, but he just can't maintain it for very long. And I tend to uh, micromanage him <laughs> when I ride, which is a big problem for me. I need to try harder to just let him be and just ride, not, not asking for something every single second. I'm such a perfectionist that I want to fix every little thing, but I need to keep reminding myself that Charlie is going to just tune me out if I keep asking for too many things. So I need to just ask for one thing, get a response, and leave him alone. It's like the book dressage formula. Um, that's what he says about aiding. He says you need to ask the horse for something, get a response, and stop giving the aid. But... It's so difficult <laughs> to just keep it that simple and not interfere when everything else needs fixing. <laughs> oh, the other thing I should mention is that on this particular day, every time I said good boy, he wanted to stop, which was funny because he hasn't been doing that lately. Um, like, I must have said it right then, and he tried to stop because he thought, oh, we're done. But I don't really know why on that particular day he kept thinking we were done every time I said good boy. So that's part of the reason for the hesitations that you see throughout the video. Now he's getting way too slow, so it's not, the work is really not very helpful at that point. And I recognize that. I was trying to do a circle, um, and he just lost the momentum in the circle. So now I'm trying to get more activity from him, asking for a little leg yield. Not too bad. And the stretch follows nicely. And I think at this point, he was getting a little tired. Um, this is not long. I mean, all in all, it's about 35 minutes, which, I mean, he's certainly capable of doing. But that actually right there is the best work the whole session. That is what we're looking for. And I wish I had stopped him right then and hopped off. Um, but I continued on. Again, with my perfectionistic nature, I tend to keep wanting more and more when I really just need to take what's given and be grateful and um, not keep pushing sometimes. 
but that's actually looking really good. So maybe it's a good thing I didn't hop off. So whenever I get him like taking nice big active steps and lifting his back, I try very hard to leave him completely alone. When he's got it right, I just ride. I don't interfere. The only time I interfere is if he's slowing down too much and then I'll ask for more activity from him. He's nice and loose here, but he's not quite active enough. Although it's getting better. And that was a pretty nice leg yield. And right there, I could feel his back coming up as I came down that long wall. So I stopped him. And um, I love this. He, he actually knew I was going to get off, so he repositioned himself because he wasn't quite uh, squared up perfectly. He was a little out in front. And I just that just thrilled me when I saw that. <laughs> um, so anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to hearing from you.